Hey everyone, Chris here from Friendly Frenzy Games. Today we're back to explain and walk you through all of the puzzles in the next escape room and escape simulator. This one's called Lost Spirits. As always, if you find this video helps you at all, give us a like and consider subscribing to Friendly Frenzy Games for more long and short guides just like this one. So to start, this um, escape room obviously is almost in like a little voodoo chamber. There's um, some cauldrons and stuff here. Hands of the Cosmos, some very cool puzzles in this one, but there's a lot that's available to us off the hop, and um, honestly, the clues add up very, very quickly. So this is definitely a room where you gotta kinda clean up as you go, otherwise it's very easy to get confused with what you've done and what you've collected. Um, I will say, to start this room, that really what we're looking to solve at the end of the day, or at the end of this room, is this center Ouija board puzzle. Everything, all of the puzzles that we're doing and unlocking are gonna um, trickle down and we're gonna find these Ouija board pieces, which is gonna ultimately help us escape the room at the, at the end of it all. So, I'm just gonna quickly move this book because, as I said, there are a few puzzles that we have available to us that we don't need solutions for other puzzles to be able to solve. The first one of these would be the mannequin puzzle here. So as you can see, there's a piece just on the couch on our left. Um, this mannequin has a letter B on it and is in the shape of an eight. With this mannequin puzzle, um, our combination is just right here. So we know we need three numbers. The B indicated on our piece here is obviously letting us know that this eight is the second um, number on our lock here. So we know we need to find another two pieces. So we have one just in the corner here and without even picking it up, you can already tell that it's in the shape of a two. And with obviously the C indicated on it, we know the two is gonna be our third number. So we can go ahead and put two in here. And we just need our last mannequin. And it's really gonna be our first mannequin. Um, this is just in the second drawer under the hand of Cosmos um, kind of shelving here. You can see it's in the shape of a one and the letter is A. So we know that our first number in this combination is A for a final combination of one, eight, two. So as I said, I like to clean as I go in this one because everything does add up very quickly. Now that we have this drawer unlocked, we see that we've unlocked um, a Jupiter planet here, and we've also got a Mars planet here. And these are just gonna go into this tablet here. You can see we have a Mars here, so we can turn around and plug that in, as well as our Jupiter, we can put that in. So we're looking for Earth, and we're looking for Saturn. You can kinda see out in the corner of the screen here a ball that looks like Earth, and it is. So we can pick that up and put that in here. And then our last planet, Saturn, that we're looking for is actually just in the top drawer here. So we can open that up and put that in. And when we do, this opens up here. So we almost have like an astral type kind of being here. What we want to do now is these posters on the wall just kind of give us a left hand, right hand orientation of how to interpret this puzzle. We can see here that there's some planets that we didn't collect and didn't put into that bottom pedestal. So we didn't put in Venus, we didn't put in Neptune, but what we are gonna be using is the Mars, Jupiter, Earth, and Saturn. So what this puzzle is saying is on the top left hand, so this one here, we need to put in Jupiter's location according to this palm here. So up under the middle finger on both the left and right hand posters, and the positioning is the same. Again, it's just to kind of give you a little bit different orientation, whichever one helps you read it a little easier. But we can see that Jupiter is just tucked under the middle finger here. So we can go ahead and plug Jupiter's position in just under the middle finger there, which is essentially the second button. We can go ahead and do the same thing for Saturn. So our top right hand, the Saturn position is just the innermost under the thumb. So we can find the thumb here, innermost, um, up under the thumb would be our fourth button. We'll do the same thing again for Earth, our lower right hand, reference the poster again. It's in the middle, so we can put in our fifth button here, which most accurately, accurately represents the middle of the hand there. And now for Mars, our lower left hand, according to this, is just up under our pinky finger. So we can find the pinky here. This is the thumb, don't touch that one. It's just this one here, the sixth button. Obviously our pinky's here. And we've unlocked a key. This key helps us with this corner padlock here. I'm just gonna drop these sheets for now. Now that this is open, we can open this and obviously it unlocks quite a few things for us, but this is um, basically 
our end game pieces that we're looking for. Now with this, we're looking to put the Ouija board back together in an alphabetical order. It won't let you actually put it down if it's not in alphabetical order, so it doesn't really matter too, too much, but it does let us know which of the other pieces that we're looking to find. So now that that one's up and out of the way, one of the other puzzles that's kind of readily available to us would be with these um, crafted incense books. So this book was obviously right in the middle of the Ouija board when we first started the room. If you click and open it, it's going to tell you the recipe that they want us to recreate and that's what we're going to use our cauldron for and ultimately it's going to spit out three numbers that we're going to put into this lock here and this is just kind of representing the cauldron also so with this we know that we are making um, a psychic incense for burning what we want to do is find morning bell flowers whole mandragora leaf whole and almond ground with this second book in the corner, the greener one, we can see that there's three different kinds of leaves, each with different shape and slightly different color. There's two different flowers, but there's only one almond. With that um, knowledge, we can come over to this kind of working station over here. If you click this drawer, it'll actually show you the ingredients that we have to reference now. So again, here are our three leaves. We have our two flowers and we have the almond. Knowing that we need to grind the almond, that's the only one that only ingredient that we actually need to do something with. You can pull the almond out of the um, shelf here, put it into the mortar and pestle, and just grind it up. You can see that it's kind of turned it into finer chunks. You just have to click it to make sure that you collect it and add it to your inventory there. What we want to do now is again just reference the recipe. So morning bellflower and mandragora leaf. We want to use this botany illustrated book here. Our morning bell flower is obviously purple. We know we don't need the rose, so the flower that we're looking for in this shelf is purple and not pink. So we can pick the purple up. And lastly, the leaves are a little harder to tell because there's three and they're all the same color. What's really going to be the telltale difference is the shape. So we can see with the catnip, it's almost got some sharp edges here. Um, the mandragora leaf, which is with the one that we know we want, it's almost like a parsnip or cabbage looking leaf. There's also the bee orchid, which is like a lighter green to darker green gradient. So in going through this um, kind of box here, here's our catnip when we can tell by the sharper edges. Here's our um, bee leaf with the lighter to darker green gradient. And then here is our uh, mandragora leaf. And you can tell again because it's kind of turnipy, parsnipy, cabbage looking. So again, just to reference that book, we know we need to put it in the correct order, otherwise it won't work. So what we're gonna do is we'll start with our flour, we'll put the leaf in, and then our almond. So put our flour in, put our leaf in, and then in goes the almond. And this spits out a combination of two, four, nine that we can put into this lock here. So we'll plug this in, two, four, nine, and that unlocks this corner, and another piece. So here's our E and F piece, perfect. So now what we have is, we don't know what this is yet, that's our tarot, ro our, our tarot card puzzle, and then we also have this puzzle here. That puzzle is just with this machine, and these instructions show you how to use it. So essentially what you're gonna do is put this, um, paper strip inside there's a little toggle switch at the bottom that as soon as you hit it it spins the machine and you look through the slits and it'll show you a picture so now that we have an idea of how the machine works we can pick it up and you can see that we start with a strip inside already I would first remove this strip and then inspect it because it get, it's gonna give you the position on the lock so we know with this one we're looking for a scale we're looking for a sundial and an hourglass we found the scale strip so we know that the number from this is going to be our first um, in the combination here so to give this a test we can put the strip back in and give this a quick hit and we can see by looking through the slits that it looks like it's shooting an eight to us so we can put eight as our first number in here and then what I would do is just remove that paper strip and throw it on the ground because especially with these it does really get confusing because there's no real way in the inventory to tell which is which. So we collected our second strip here. There is our other one but again to not get confused I just want to kind of keep it a little simple for now. We'll drag our second strip in and just first inspect it. 
So our sundial is the second com is the second number in our combination. So knowing that, we can drag that in and flick the switch, and we see it's a six. So we can put a six in this combination here and get rid of that piece of paper. And we can pick up our last one here now. And just to confirm, it is the hourglass, so it is a different piece. And our last um, number in the combination. Give this a click, a quick flip, and you'll see we have a three in the slits here. So we can put three in this combo. 863 is our final combination for that lock, and we have another Ouija piece. So our S and T piece obviously goes here. We'll drop this machine, and we can now work on our last puzzle. So the tarot root, or the tarot cards, anyways, are just unlocked under the um, mortar and pestle station. What we're gonna, what we're gonna want to do with this is open the tarot cards, click on the pack, and now this will have everything exposed to you. What you can kind of see here is that each card is represented by a Roman numeral, which indicates the value. You gotta have some sort of indication of, or some sort of um, method of reading the Roman numerals or understanding them, anyways, to be able to complete this puzzle because you need to interpret this guide. So what this is gonna do is this first little quiz answer solution is gonna be the first position in our lock. This one's gonna be our second one, third one, and fourth one. Obviously you can see with some of these, you need to add the two cards to be able to get our second number. You need to subtract these three cards to get our fourth number. So knowing this, we can start on our first one. It was at the Emperor's Ball when I saw her for the first time. We see the Emperor here, and it's represented by a five Roman numeral. So we can go ahead and plug in five as our first position in the combination. Our second one um, very soon became lovers and did our vows in front of the priestess. So lovers and priestess, and we need to add them. So V plus one, so six, plus the priestess two. Six plus two is eight, so that'll be our second number. Go back to our guide. What a fool I have been. Fool is zero, and because that's already flipped over in our combination, we can just leave it. We don't need to touch it at all, so that's one less thing to do. And now our last one. So we're looking for the world, fortune, and strength, and they're all going to be subtracted from each other. So world being the first one, XX1 is 21. The wheel of fortune, or fortune, we're going to subtract an X, or 10, so we're left with 11. And then our last one being strength, V plus the three is eight. So we're gonna subtract eight from 11 and we get a final number of three. So we can put that, that into the combination to unlock our last Ouija piece and plug this into the table here. As soon as we do that, you'll notice that the lights go dark and all of a sudden we have candles revealed that have flames. They're gonna all blow out, but what we're looking to do with this puzzle is look for what the candles are spelling. So we have a V, an O, an I, and a D. And now we'll wait to see if anything else comes up. It doesn't, everything gets reset, so we know what we're trying to solve with the Ouija board here. We're trying to spell the word void. So plug V in, we'll plug O in, we can plug I in, and our last one is D. So you'll see now that the table kind of levitates and what it's going to do actually underneath is create a void for us to let us know that we've completed the room. So as you can see, episode is finished. Another very cool room in this Edgewood, Edgewood Mansion set of rooms. Um, as we mentioned at the beginning of this video, your support truly does go a long way. If you made it this far, we hope that you like what you've seen. Drop a comment, give us a like, and subscribe to Friendly Frenzy Games for more guides, tips, and tricks.